today in Watching Your Wealth, how apps can help you save more for retirement. This is Watching Your Wealth from the Wall Street Journal. Now, from our studios in New York, here's Veronica Dagger. This is Veronica Dagger, and you're listening to Watching Your Wealth, while you learn all you need to know about building your wealth and protecting your money. Ann Torgerson is a WSJ Wealth Advisor, reporter, and retirement expert. Good to have you back on, Ann. Thanks for having me. Great. So, Ann, your latest column talks about experiments behavioral economist Dan O'Reilly did with mobile apps. Tell us about that. Sure. So he's got this lab out of Duke University, and it's relatively new, and they just published a large report full of it results from over a dozen experiments on things that they're testing in the lab that um, generally seem to be workable if you want to adapt them to your own life. They're, they're trying to show people how to better you know, stick to budget, save more, and pay down debt faster. And a lot of the strategies that they're using actually employ apps that are available to every, every one of us um, that can help people sort of automate good financial behavior. I like that. We all can use a little bit of help, a little bit of a nudge to help us get uh, in line with our goals and stay on budget. So let's talk a bit about budgeting. How might we become better at budgeting and what are some of the apps that might help us with that? Sure. So one of the experiments they did, which was um, interesting, was that they looked at um, the power of sort of framing your budget differently from what we normally do, which is we normally you know, come up with a monthly budget. But um, their results show that you're much better off actually thinking in terms of your weekly budget. And they did this experiment with people who were food stamp, who are food stamp recipients. Um, this is um, – apparently it's it's hard to track, you know, how much you're spending. And so they, they used a, uh, an app that's – I don't think this is broadly available, but they used an app to help people track their food stamp spending – but also really to try to divide their monthly allotment of food stamp money into a weekly amount. And what they found is that the people who thought in terms of a weekly amount were able to make their benefits last uh, several days longer than those who thought in a monthly amount. And the reason why is actually pretty simple. So I give an example in, in my column. If you have a $20 grocery bill, you go to the grocery store, you you spend $20, you're thinking that's no big deal if you just received your monthly food stamp allotment of $250. Um, It seems like a pretty small fraction of that amount. But if you if you divide your food stamp, your $250 a month food stamp amount into a $60 weekly budget, that $20 is, you know, a third of your weekly budget. So it's just a much more kind of easily understood way for people to keep track of the trade-offs that they're making between spending now and having some left over. That's a great tip. And keeping the perspective and your time frame can really make a difference in terms of what you're spending, what you're saving. What about rounding up when budgeting? I know that was another point in your column. Yeah, exactly. So this I, I really like too. And the, the I mean, one of the, the real frustrations that financial planners have is that it's really hard to get people to stick to budgets. Um, people just perceive budgeting as kind of boring and, you know, they want to spend their money. <laughs> they don't, they don't want to be yeah. sort of told that, that they can't do that. Um, so um, so one of the ways that the, that one of the one of the problems that people have with budgeting is it's just incredibly tedious. And when you've got these bills that are coming in, you know, and they're all like these odd numbers, like, you know, three hundred and fifty four dollars and thirty four cents. Right. <laughs> you, you know, you just. You just throw up your hands instead of adding all these together to figure out how much you're really spending. So so the intuition here is that it's a lot easier for people to keep track of what they're spending if they just kind of round up and they say, well, instead of spending, you know, $1,024 on my mortgage, let's just think in, in raw and in round terms to, you know, $1,025 or $1,030. And so it's easier for people to add these numbers in their heads when they round them up. So that makes budgeting easier. The second thing is if you're if you owe um, debt, you know, for example, student loan payment or a mortgage payment, if you round that number up, it not only makes it easier to to think about what you're spending per month, but you can actually also prepay a lot of your debt that way just by adding rounding up to the next nearest, you know, round number. Save you on interest expenses when you're doing that. Right. It's, it may seem like a small amount to just, you know, round up from, you know, five hundred and three three $354 to, you know, $360 a month. But 
um, if you consistently pay an extra six dollars a month, you'll you'll pay off your loan sooner. Makes a difference over time. Any mm-hmm. specific app that helps us with that? Yeah. So there's this um, app called Earn Up, which is a um, it's it's focused on debt and helping people pay off debt as quickly as possible. And so what it does is helps people automate their debt, but it also gives them the option to round up, which I think is helpful. That is helpful. What about uh, saving? getting better at savings. How can we do that? Sure. So so one of the, the less painful ways to save is to um, is to promise to save in the future. And this has actually been implemented within 401k plans. Um, there's some interesting research um, that 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 401k plans have adapted where they they auto automatically enroll people at say three percent of their savings, and they get them to commit to increasing their savings by one percentage point a year. So this year you're at three percent, next year you're at four percent, the next year you're at five percent, etc. And some of the philosophy behind this is is that you know most likely you're going to get some kind of raise next year, and so if you increase your savings and it's time to that raise, you may not even notice it. It may not even be a painful thing for you to adjust to. Um, you know, the second thing is psychologically, it's just so much easier for us to think about doing difficult things in the future. You think to yourself, okay, you know, um, next month I will actually start my diet and, mm-hmm. and I will be very successful at that point. Next month I will increase my savings and I will be very successful. And the reason why is because, you know, in, in the present, we, we know how difficult it is to make these trade offs. We know. That in the present, if we pledge to save $1,000 today, that means we're not going to be able to spend that money on these, you know, 20 things that we want to spend the money on immediately. Whereas in the future, we don't really think about, you know, what those immediate pressing needs are going to be on us. And we sort of imagine ourselves in a perfect state where we're able to, to... sort of prioritize the things that should be prioritized, like savings. So anyway, the, the, the trick here um, that they, they worked with in the lab is to promise to save some of these financial windfalls that you're going to receive. Um, it Promise to save a percentage of them now. Um, so if you know you're going to get a tax refund, if you know you're going to get a raise, if you know you're going to get a bonus, the trick is to say today what percentage of those windfalls you want to save. And their findings were that people who promised to save ahead of time actually saved at a higher rate um, when the windfall came. Nice. Any app can help us with that? Yeah, you can use an app called Digit. Um, they have these um, things called goal emojis. Um, it's a feature that you can use, and you can use that to sort of promise today to save in the future. Nice. And we need to take a quick break, but when we come back, I'd love to hear your tips on how we can avoid raiding that savings account. Stay with us. Keep tabs on the markets. Listen to WSJ's Money Beat podcast for straight talk on Wall Street that's right on the money. WSJ podcasts. Listen ambitiously. This is Watching Your Wealth from the Wall Street Journal. Now, from our studios in New York, here's Veronica Dagger. Welcome back to Watching Your Wealth. WSJ's Ann Turgeson is explaining how we can save more for retirement. And you said, say we're saving, but how can we avoid raiding the savings accounts that we've created? Yeah, it's, it's very tempting. So another um, study that Professor Ariely did, which was very interesting, is um, they looked at people who, I think most of us generally, you know, we put all of our savings into one general savings account, right? And then you're sort of thinking generally, oh, I, I might want to save for a vacation or something. But but lo and behold, you're walking down the street, you see a pair of shoes that you want to buy. It, it's pretty painless to go into that general savings pot and take that money and buy the pair of shoes. What they found is that if you actually earmark your savings for specific purposes by dividing your savings up into different envelopes um, or different pots of money. So you have your Hawaii vacation fund in one pot. You have Christmas presents in another pot. You have your flat screen TV in a third pot. Then it's a lot harder to then to buy that pair of shoes, say it's a you know, $100 pair of shoes, when you know you're going to have to take that money from your Hawaii vacation fund. So you can directly see the consequences of um, these Im- sort of impulsive buys or, you know, th- for things that maybe you don't, don't definitely need. You can definitely see the consequences right then and there. 
And any apps that come to mind that help with those ones? Um, yeah. So um, ca- several actually do this. Um, there's an app called Simple um, and one called Capital and Digit also. Um, they work in different ways, but they all use that envelope method of allowing people to save in different pots for different goals. Great tips as always. Thank you so much for joining us, Anne. Thanks for having me. And do you have a personal finance question you'd like us to answer? Email us at podcast at DowJones.com. This has been Watching Your Wealth, a production of the Wall Street Journal. I'm Veronica Dagger. For more information, check us out at WSJ.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening. For more podcasts, check us out at WSJ.com slash podcasts. Become a subscriber on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and now look for us on the Google Play Music app on Android devices.